Hey, what's up? I'm Marte Berlini, and in this video, I want to give an update on my tiny house plan. So I've been talking with the architect, trying to get a floor plan figured out for the tiny house, and they sent over a couple versions, and I wasn't really happy with what, what they sent over, and I requested a few revisions, and they just sent back uh, another revision, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I wanted to share it with you, and uh, just give you an update on where we're at. So I'll show you here. So this is version one they sent me. They, said, they sent me two versions, and they said, hey, which one do you like, one or two? And this is the first one they sent me. And you can see here, this is the entrance here, front door. You have like a little living room area here. TV is there, a little desk for, you know, either eating or, you know, a desk for, for working, things like that. Um, all the traditional stuff here. We have a stove, there's a dishwasher here, a sink, refrigerator, washer dryer combo. And then we have, you know, through the bedroom here, we have the, the closets, obviously the bed and the bathroom over here. And we are looking at a total of, so 344 square feet on the ground floor and 150 square feet in the loft up here. And, that, and as you can see, the loft is this top section up here. And that comes out to a total of 494 square feet if you include the loft um, and the ground floor. And I wasn't particularly happy with this. I didn't want, I want a really nice open space for the ceiling, uh, but I want a loft as well. So I didn't like that the loft kind of went all across the whole front here, because uh, I feel like that would kind of eat up a lot of the head space. And so I wanted to keep it to one side. So that was one complaint I had on this one. And I also didn't like that, you know, if someone is staying up in the loft, you know, if they want to get down and use uh, the restroom, they have to walk through the bedroom. Maybe there, there might be people staying in here and, you know, walk through the bedroom to use the bathroom. So, and it might be in the middle of the night, you know, if maybe they have kids there and they might wake them up and, you know, whatever it may be, it's not ideal. Um, and so that was my complaint there. So, and the other version they sent here, yeah, this is the second version. So this one does have that open space I was talking about. I do like this. This is nice and open here. This is the kitchen area above the kitchen and it's all open all the way up to the roof. Uh, and the loft is just to one side over here. I do like that layout, but I still didn't like this issue here where you have to walk through the bedroom to get to the bathroom. So I didn't like that. And this one is the same square footage. And so I sent back, you know, my thoughts and I actually took a design program, uh, Figma, and just kind of like drew out what I wanted. You know, I wanted to keep everything, you know, the, the bathroom and the, um, and the bedroom on one side with the loft above that and keep the whole kitchen area open. And I also didn't want this like little, this, this bathroom kind of sticking out. You can see it's a rectangle and then you have this, the bathroom kind of sticking out. So it's not like a true, like a, I basically wanted a rectangle, but they kind of had the rectangle and then that part kind of protruding out to the side. And I didn't particularly want that. I just want to keep it a rectangle, keep it simple, straightforward, you know, makes it nice and easy. And so I requested that as well. So what they came back with is this here, and I am pretty happy with it. So again, you walk in the front door and you have the kitchen here, the little desk. Uh, I have them remove the uh, dishwasher because it's not really you know, crucial. It's not a, a family home with tons of dishes. It's gonna be a couple dishes. You know, you can wash them in the sink, no problem. So uh, I said that really isn't an issue, uh, but you know, washer and dryer, stove, sink, refrigerator. And then, so you can see here, this is what I basically drew up. And what was ideal about this is like I said, uh, kind of gets rid of that protruding part over here. And also people can come down from the loft and go into the, into the bathroom without having to walk through the bedroom. And I just thought this was a lot, um, just a better use of this space and more functional. Uh, so you don't have to, like I said, walk through the bathroom or walk through the bedroom to get to the bathroom and stuff, which didn't really make sense to me. So this is where we're at. And I really do like this a lot. Um, and this, I said, basically, we're going to move forward with this. And the square footage is a little bit larger on this. So we're looking at 450 square feet on the ground floor. And then the loft area is a little bit bigger with this layout. So we're looking at 215 square feet for a total of 665 square feet, which is pretty good. Um, that is a definitely a good usable space. It could be like a long-term rental if I wanted as well. Um, 450 square feet is a little bit on the smaller side, but with the loft, it really does add that nice additional space. And there'll be a ladder that goes up to that uh, to access that. So um, to give an idea of what this looks like on the property, 
I have a survey here. So this is the house here and the little patio. This is a whole walkway that goes back here right now and is kind of this whole area. And so I'm gonna remove all that uh, because of ground coverage issues. So I can't have too much ground coverage on the property. Um, there needs to be a certain percentage for, you know, what's covered and what's not. Uh, it's called impervious ground cover. And so I need to actually cut ribbon strips in the driveway and it's a long story. But anyways, basically this is where it's gonna be going, the, the back right corner of the property. And you can see it's offsets. Uh, this is all uh, done to code. So it needs to be 10 feet off the property uh, line on the back and then five feet on the side. So that's what these lines are here for. And yeah, you'll just basically, uh, there'll be a walkway that goes down here. There's a gate right there. Walk through the gate. There'll probably be kind of a stone walkway through here. And then there's the front door here. And eventually after this gets passed and you know, the city approves it, everything's good, they build it, it's checked off. Uh, I get their certificate of occupancy, everything's squared away. Uh, I may add some kind of a patio here uh, in the front to make it a little bit, you know, a nice little space for people to use, you know, maybe barbecue or, or whatever it may be. But that's where we're at right now. And I said, go ahead and get things started. And we are moving now. So what's coming next, I can pull up my email here. But what's coming next is they are going to be doing um, uh, soil sampling in the backyard. So geotech engineering, uh, they're going to be doing drafting electrical, drafting uh, exterior elevations, cabinet elevations. They're going to draft the roof plan, uh, draft plumbing plan, draft proposed trench paths. So they have to trench through the dirt to, to put in uh, the water lines and gas lines and everything. So all that, and they're also gonna do a 3D model render for me as well. Um, some other things I may do here is they, this, another service they provide is you can, you can choose all your finishing. So you can choose like the tile and the flooring, you know, the washer and dryer, whatever you want. You can, you can pick all that stuff out. So you can take it to um, your contractor and be like, here, here is everything. It's all laid out for you. So um, I probably work with them to get the, the material sheet together um, there's also structural engineering services. So I do have to get approval from a structural engineer to approve it. So that's a requirement of the city. So I'll be doing that as well. Uh, I'll get, go through some permitting services. And the last thing that they offer is actually turnkey development and construction. So they will actually, this company, Small House Solutions, will do the entire process for you from you know, the very beginning to the very end. You can you know, just talk to them about what you want. You know, they'll do all the, the plans, the engineering, and you know, work with everybody and work with contractors to get it completely built for you, you know, turnkey. And that makes it really easy, but also makes it kind of expensive. So I asked them, I was like, hey, can I help you uh, build this? Because I'm trying to save on some costs. And basically they said no, because they have a little bit of a warranty that they offer on their uh, on what they provide, which is good. Um, but, you know, I want to learn in the process as well. There's two things. I'm trying to learn how to do this stuff uh, because I'm investing in real estate. and I want to take these skills to other properties. And um, I'm also trying to save on cost because whatever I can do myself, uh, you know, I want to save some money. Because if I do turnkey, it's going to be probably, I'm going to guess and say about $130,000, $140,000 to build that out, you know, completely turnkey. And I believe if I you know, can do it myself to some degree and work with my contractor. Um, I can cut that probably in half, maybe a little bit more than half uh, to get it all finished up. So that's the hope. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, things are progressing and now we'll give another update as, you know, as we move forward. But um, if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.